Well, good afternoon, viewers. Today we're back working on this 2014 Silverado, which had the low vacuum to the vacuum pump. And I've got the vacuum gauge teed into the brake blind. Now, this is a vacuum pump. This is not engine vacuum. Sometimes it builds up, but it's pretty slow. So, I believe it's supposed to be around 25. So, as you can see, we've got 15, 16 inches of vacuum. So, we're going to change that vacuum pump down there with the stretch belt on it. So, there's the GM part number, Genuine GM. Comes with the gasket. Uh, if you slip a standard screwdriver underneath the belt here, and turn the engine over clockwise you can walk the belt off it's a stretch belt so we're just going to take the, I just took the belt off then there's three push pins that hold that harness and the connector to the uh, cam sensor and the cam timing solenoid I think that is the harness is uh, in a plastic guard that doesn't come out of there so we're going to have to work around it. There's not much resistance to cranking this thing. You got to take that coupling off to the red, push that red lock in and the hose or pipe should push off. You can't get up from down here. Can't get through the wheel well. There are four bolts that hold this on. There's one. Focus. Oh well, we'll see if we can get some sockets in here. So you can get the upper back bolt from the top with a five inch extension and a 13 mil socket flex headed ratchet. The lower one you can get with a 13 mil flex socket for the, and a long extension from underneath through the control arm. The two forward, two front ones you should be able to get from the front. So I found if you push the pump up and then move that uh, harness towards the serpentine belt, I've tied it to the serpentine belt now to kind of give me a little bit more room. You have to put it up pulley first and then turn it around backwards. So there's the, the new pump installed. That's a challenge, boy. Again, the bottom back bolt from the bottom with a long extension and a 13, six, or three, 13 mil flex socket. The two top ones from the top with a five inch and a three inch extension. And then the bottom one with a semi deep socket and a ratchet from this end. Wiring harness is reattached. I had to drill out the plastic in here because the rivets broke. And walk the belt back on. Make sure it's square on the pulley on the back. The belt's in good shape, so we're gonna start it up now and see what kind of vacuum it produces. Well, that's much better. That's almost 30 inches of vacuum. It holds my nipple in there. I bleed the vacuum off, builds up like pretty much 30 inches of vacuum, which is almost a perfect vacuum. So all that's left to all that's left to remain is uh, clear the codes from the anti-lock brake computer and ship it. So I've loaded the vehicle history. Let's do a code scan. had a low vacuum code. It also had a pump motor circuit actuator stuck code C0110 which means a problem with the internal pump motor. But the C025E, that's the code we're addressing. Hopefully this uh, C0110 Test not passed since power-up warning indicator requested. 
because that means changing the electrohydraulic unit. Low voltage, LIN bus, low speed CAN bus, left rear audio, control of power circuit low, control module low voltage. Let's clear the codes. says it has to be off, but I know I can do it running. The ABS codes may not clear. I might have to go into the ABS module manually and clear them. Let's check the anti-lock brakes. Okay, let's try clearing this. Okay, I'll do it with the key on engine off. vehicle has two problems, one with the electrohydraulic control unit. Did I not cancel that? No, I clicked display codes, not clear codes. Key on engine off. Display codes. Hmm, that's not good. Well, we'll have to discuss it with him. He knew he was aware of this problem. But it definitely needed a vacuum pump to address the low vacuum code. So that's it for now.